Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 most hated songs. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable tracks that are strongly disliked by a good portion of people. We won't be including kids' songs, so Baby Shark will not be making an appearance. Number 20. Rockstar Nickelback This Canadian rock band from Alberta has quite a stigma attached to their music. While they consistently found success on the radio, many of their songs seem to be disliked, including the very meme-worthy Photograph. Look at this photograph Every time I do it makes me laugh But perhaps the most hated of them all is Rockstar. Perhaps not so coincidentally, both appear on the same studio album, 2005's All The Right Reasons. Despite being a successful single, Rockstar has never really been liked. Cause we all just wanna be big rock stars and live in hilltop bosses driving 15 cars. It has been called a terrible song by the likes of The Guardian and BuzzFeed, and it was even named the worst single of the year in a pop justice poll. Maybe it's a little too dad rock for most. Number 19. Timber Pitbull featuring Kesha. Is there anything more 2013 than Pitbull and Kesha? Timber was an enormous commercial success, and per Billboard, it was one of the Hot 100 songs of the 2010s. But just because it was popular doesn't necessarily mean it was any good. It may have been a club banger, but its incessant harmonica really tends to grate on the old ears. Plus, it just feels like both Pitbull and Kesha are more talented than this. That's saying nothing of the lyrics, which give off a rather dirty and skeezy vibe, or the involvement of controversial producer Dr. Luke. Let's all yell Timber and get rid of this song for good. Number 18. Swagger Jagger, Cher Lloyd. We mean, you know what you're getting into with a title like Swagger Jagger. You can't stop looking at me, staring at me, be what I be. You can't stop looking at me. This was the first single from Cher Lloyd, who found success on the seventh season of The X Factor. It was not a good debut, to say the least. Parts of the song's melody blatantly ripped off Oh My Darling Clementine, so we're already annoyed about that. Then it bombards us with some obnoxious vocals and a piercing digital beat that sounds like a thousand vuvuzelas at a soccer game. There's also the fact that the lyrics come across as very egotistical and self-centered. Lloyd may have swagger, but she failed to make a good record in this instance. Number 17. The Ketchup Song Asay Rahe Las Ketchup While not an enormous hit in the United States, the ketchup song swept Europe and many other countries throughout 2002. Listeners have compared the song to the Macarena, as they share many stylistic traits. It has a similar propulsive dancing beat, it's also in Spanish, and it's meant for nothing more than to get people up and moving. The ketchup song was tailor-made for success, dance routine and all. But sadly, once the initial impact wears off, there's not much to enjoy. In fact, you're left with an unpleasant aftertaste, metaphorically speaking. That chorus is very repetitive and tends to get incredibly annoying after a while. Number 16. Party in the USA Miley Cyrus Initially meant for Jessie J, Party in the USA marked a pivotal time for Miley Cyrus. With this tune, the superstar proved that she was here to stay, which is fitting since it references a literal move from Nashville to Hollywood. Now, the song is certainly catchy enough, which helps to explain how well it performed back in 2009 but it also reeks of manufactured pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The backing track is filled with annoying whizzes and whoop whoop style sounds, and there's no variety in the music whatsoever. In other words, it's a very cheesy number that's entirely carried by Cyrus's strong vocals. Number 15. Selfie. The Chainsmokers. Even the title Selfie makes us gag. The musical duo wanted to capitalize on the titular photo craze of the early 2010s, so we got this grating tune. When Jason's at the table, I kept on seeing him look at me while he's with that other girl. Do you think he was just doing that to make me jealous? From a marketing standpoint, the idea was apparently to make a Harlem Shake-esque smash. And boy, did it work. But at least the Harlem Shake was fun. This was just irksome. The repetitive beat is insanely irritating, but the worst part is easily the shallow and harmful lyrics. Let me take another selfie. Lines like, I only got 10 likes in the last five minutes. Do you think I should take it down? Speaks for themselves. Can they take the whole song down while they're at it? Number 14, the hamster dance song, Hampton the Hamster. This one really brings back memories. A glorious time capsule back to the early internet. The hamster dance song makes for great nostalgia, but a horrible listening experience. The hamster dance meme came to be in 1998, courtesy of a student named Deidre LaCartes. The hamster dance song was released two years later, presumably to play off its success. But looking back, that was a mistake. The squeaky hamster voice makes our ears hurt, and it even features a very unwanted rap portion. Let's try it. It's just a cute meme, so we obviously weren't expecting Beethoven. But even so, this was a low point for the internet. And music. Number 13. Stars Are Blind. Paris Hilton. Many listeners were going into Stars Are Blind wanting to hate it. After all, Paris Hilton was the embodiment of privilege in the early to mid 2000s. Those are the guys I wanna take me for a ride. So the idea of her manufacturing a pop career seemed like nothing more than an attempt to attain more popularity, and it was too much for some. Stars Are Blind didn't do her any favors either. Granted, the tune is nowhere near as bad as it could have been. But her breathy vocals are quite mediocre, leading some to criticize her lack of talent in that department. It's also a pretty one-dimensional track. All in all, it can be quite maddening. Number 12. Axel F. Crazy Frog Here's a fun fact. The person who made Crazy Frog, Eric Vernquist, originally called it the annoying thing. When the creator is calling it annoying, you know you're in for a wild ride. The CG creation became known for its remix of Axel F, the famous instrumental from Beverly Hills Cop. The source material is the only good part of the song. All the original bits from Crazy Frog are nauseating. The gibberish singing is infuriating and takes away from an otherwise solid melody. Let's not even talk about the part where he imitates a revving motorcycle, even though he just did. It gives us a headache. It's a quaint novelty song, but even the best novelty songs are bothersome. Number 11. Blurred Lines Robin Thicke featuring T.I. and Pharrell Williams Blurred Lines isn't necessarily hated for its music. Rather, a lot of people take umbrage with the song's lyrical content. Critics and regular listeners alike notice that the number encourages a type of problematic behavior where consent is overlooked. The speaker in the track is not a particularly likable man, and lines like I know you want it have been deemed creepy and uncomfortable. You could maybe even see them as borderline malicious. Even the music video has been criticized as sexist, with the unrated version in particular generating controversy. It's pretty hard to see past all that. It's an unnecessarily nasty song that many want nothing to do with. Number 10. My Humps. Black Eyed Peas. 
This band was on top of the world around 2005, but that doesn't mean everything they were releasing was worth positive attention. My Humps is arguably the worst song of their career, both in terms of musical and lyrical content. I drive these brothers crazy, I do it on the daily, they treat me really nicely. It's both boring and redundant, and contains a really awful vocal melody. Plus, we can only hear My Hump so many times before it turns to gibberish in our ears. The song's lyrics were also widely criticized, with many arguing that the shameless sexual content objectifies women. My Humps has also appeared on numerous Worst Songs Ever style lists, and for good reason. Number 9. Crank That Soldier Boy Soldier Boy Tell Em This song was a bit of a phenomenon in 2007. It enjoyed seven weeks atop the Hot 100, and the iconic dance was replicated across the world. If it wasn't for that routine, Crank That would have probably faded into obscurity. The vocals are annoyingly loud and obnoxious, and whoever decided on a steel pan loop should never work in the music industry again. It doesn't make for a pleasant sound, and hearing it every couple of seconds makes us want to turn the song off real quick. Though he didn't stop making music, Soldier Boy disappeared from the mainstream scene as quickly as he came, leaving us this song to remember him by. Thanks, but no thanks. Number 8. Look What You Made Me Do Taylor Swift we got dark Taylor Swift for the Reputation era, and it was… polarizing. The album's lead single, Look What You Made Me Do, was a drastic departure from her past style, and it tended to divide critics and listeners. The tough girl lyrics are a little cringe and try-hard, like Swift is trying to be villainous rather than just being villainous. And the admittedly brilliant pre-chorus is undermined by a very disappointing hook that simply repeats the title of the song over and over again. The number had no trouble dominating the charts and getting people talking. But from a musical standpoint, it felt like a disappointing comeback after the pop culture sensation that was 1989. Number 7. Cotton Eye Joe, Rednecks. We have to commend Rednecks' bravery. Who else would mix techno with bluegrass and expect it to work? But does it work? If you ask the charts, then yes, it succeeded wonderfully. Ironically, this remix of the classic American tune song became a phenomenon throughout Europe. But in terms of enjoyment, no, it did not work. The song is all over the place. Violins and banjos clash with a modern club beat, and the constant chanting gets irritating after a while. Plus, the way the singing swaps between male and female vocals feels disjointed. It's a lot to digest, and it sounds messy and unpleasant. Number 6. You're Beautiful James Blunt. A one poll survey once named this the most irritating song, which tells you everything you need to know. It's not a horrible track in theory, but it's a letdown through execution. My life is brilliant. My love is pure. I saw an angel. Well, that and the constant radio airplay. Even James Blunt himself has admitted that it was overplayed, telling Hello Magazine that it became annoying. He's not wrong. The lyrics are a little too saccharine for many, and nasally vocals aren't everyone's cup of tea. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. It's true. There's also no denying the cheesiness of the music video, with the singer dramatically undressing in the rain and then jumping into the ocean. It's all very hard to genuinely enjoy. Number 5. I'm a Gummy Bear. The Gummy Bear Song. Gummy Bear. The aughts were a very strange time for the internet. They were fun, yes, but strange. 
The hamster dance song must have really done a number on us because we were suddenly bombarded with annoying virtual creatures performing painfully irksome songs. About one year after Axel F came, I'm a Gummy Bear by the hilariously named Gummy Bar. It's arguably the worst of the 2000s novelty songs, and that's saying something. The high-pitched and auto-tuned vocals couldn't be more bothersome, and it's just all-around aggravating. If anything, the song proves the scary power of internet memes. If they can turn this into a popular song, then they can really do anything. Number 4. Whip My Hair – Willow Smith the best thing we can say about this song is that then 9-year-old Willow Smith had a heck of a voice. Many critics compared it to Rihanna's body of work, and that's no small compliment. It's a shame that her vocals were overshadowed by one of the worst choruses of the decade. It consists of nothing but the line, I whip my hair back and forth, which is endlessly repeated over and over again with an unsavory screech. It makes the song seem ten times longer than it actually is, and it completely ruins what could have been otherwise a pleasant listening experience. We're just a little unclear. Does she whip her hair back and forth or not? Number 3. It's Every Day, Bro. Jake Paul featuring Team 10. Jake Paul is one of the most notorious figures on the internet, and not always for positive reasons. But does the song deserve all the hate it receives? It's every day, bro, with the Disney Channel flow. Five mil on YouTube in six months, never done before. If you ask us, yes. It's a diss track aimed at various internet celebrities. But Paul isn't a rapper. In fact, his rapping is horrible. And then there are the lyrics. The Team 10 members shamelessly boast about their riches and fame, and it's not something that people want to hear. It's every day, bro. It's every day, bro. I said it's every day, bro. Plus, you know you're getting a lyrical masterpiece with lines like England is my city. Sure, the video racked up views, but it was also widely hated. Why don't they brag about that next time? Number 2. Friday. Rebecca Black. Poor Rebecca Black was really brought through the ringer after Friday was released. The song was immediately criticized by pretty much everyone and became a national laughing stock. Every aspect of the tune was viciously picked apart, from Black's auto-tuned vocals to the gloriously meme-worthy lyrics like Tomorrow is Saturday and Sunday comes afterwards. The song spread through social media like wildfire and was even the most disliked video on YouTube for a while. It's Friday, Friday, gotta get down on Friday. Black herself certainly didn't deserve the vitriol that was spewed her way, but there's no denying that it really is a dreadful song. At least it serves as a great throwback to 2011? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Baby – Justin Bieber featuring Ludacris Justin Bieber has really come a long way since Baby. Released in 2010, it immediately made him a musical pariah. You know you love me. The song was widely reviled, and though Bieber's fame grew, he personally attracted hatred the likes of which was rather staggering. Despite its chart success, the song remained the most disliked video in YouTube's history for years. Aside from a temporary knockdown by Friday, Baby held on to that not-so-desirable spot until the infamous 2018 YouTube Rewind. Bieber's hair, the painfully redundant chorus, and even the romantic lyrics crooned by the teenage singer came together in a mishmash of true musical depravity. Thankfully, Bieber has long moved on from Baby, growing up and maturing musically to become an incredibly beloved and respected artist. 
Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.